So we are now live. Hello, everyone. Um, if if you haven't seen already, just just as a bit of like uh, admin, I guess you could say at the top of the, the comment section, I put that if you want to put a question in chat, put Q and then colon. So I know which is a question and which is just talking. And I've also said, don't ask for invites because I keep getting asked for invites. and I don't have any invites. <laughs> so, so don't ask for any more. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll go around. I'll uh, introduce myself for those uh, Tani users that are not familiar with me. Um, my background education is in sports coaching. And then my under, so my undergrad sports coach, my postgrad strength and conditioning. So my background is not in tech. So don't ask me about programming because I, I, the only stuff that the stuff I know is from Obsidian. That's it. Um, I, I've used Notion like three plus years, been using Obsidian for just over two years now. Uh, so Tana, I have maybe two weeks of experience, but I know Evie's got much more experience than me. So uh, Evie, over to you. Well, hello, my name's Ev and uh, I have only two more weeks of experience than you, Danny. Uh, I've only been using it for about a month, um, which is really funny. So um, my name's Ev. I am a marketer by day and a creative entrepreneur uh, all the other times. And uh, I love everything to do with tech. So I've used Notion. I've used Rome. I've used Obsidian for maybe a week or so. And then Tana. Um, but I do love to um, help people kind of organize their knowledge, organize their life and do some fun stuff with, with these kind of um, tools. So, yeah, that's me. Nice. Braga, over to you. Hi, I'm Braga. Uh, I, I, uh, back in the day, I, uh, my education is from acting. Uh, so I kind of stumbled, in, stumbled into the tech world when I realized as an adult uh, with kids, you need to make, you know, make a living to pay for houses and stuff. <laughs> uh, so I've been using Talon for, since around New Year's, um, which kind of is a bit, a, a bit embarrassing seeing all the things Ev is doing in her two weeks or so, a month or so, or so of using it. But yeah, I mainly use Tana to um, manage my, my children's podcast and my sales work. So I kind of build up my CRM sales workflow and then I do some like project management and also getting into long form writing, which I'm sure we're going to dive into later, <laughs> Danny. Uh, and I, before I was a Tana user, I was an Obsidian main. So uh, that's kind of the only big PKM I've used outside of you know some dashboards in Notion. Nice. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen just so everyone sort of knows what we're working from. So for those of you unfamiliar with Tana, which welcome, uh, this is Evie's workspace. I think I'm getting the terminology right. Um, or is this your account? Yeah, workspace. Uh, it's yeah. Yep. It's yeah. our well, it's our shared workspace now. Yes. Yes. But it so, lives in my account. Yeah. Oh, look, there you are. I, I can I can see. Ugh, I wish I wish there was a profile picture. That that'd be fun. But yeah, so we're we, we've collected some questions. Uh, we'll work through the questions. If any questions come into chat, obviously we can we can star those and work through them. Um, <laughs> why are you such a? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let the jokes begin. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess the the first question that I, I do want to tackle um, is. The, the, the Tana notion, what app can it replace question. And the reason I want to tackle this one first, I, I don't know whether it's coincidences at the top, but I want to tackle it first anyway, is because a lot of people are saying, can Tana replace X app, whether it's Rome, Obsidian? I think Notion is probably the most accurate. I did. Let me, is it this one? Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. It's appeared on my other screen instead of the right one. There we go. So this is a tweet I saw from, I'll probably need to zoom in so people can read it. Um, Pritav, I probably pronounced that wrong, um, but Avi also responded. And I think this sums it up yeah. quite well, where if you're an Obsidian LogSeq user and it works, then stick with it. Um, but if you're a Notion user, you're, I guess, I guess the transition's easier, maybe? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it'd be interesting to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Yeah, I I 100% agree with this. Like Because I was a no like I'm still a big Notion user, but as a Notion user before I moved to Rome and then uh, I moved to Rome and realised, wow, you can just put things anywhere mm. and kind of tag them. And, and then I, I think I kind of built Tana in Rome because I literally have tags and queries and that's how I did, that's how I used Rome 
Um, so while everyone was double bracketing everything, I was not doing that. Um, so I think I, I think I kind of, yeah, like uh, accidentally kind of, um, kind of fell into that way. But it's because I already had, I already had that kind of mind frame from Notion where I knew what things were and then I needed a way to find those things. Um, yeah. But I loved in Rome how you could just put things anywhere. Um, and so then I knew as soon as I saw even just that marketing video from Tana, I knew, oh, this is the thing. This is the thing for me because that's exactly how I used to roam. So I do think that Notion people have a real advantage coming over to Tana and they, I think they're just going to feel like this freeness. Like, you, I mean, you've used Notion, like, you you got to click around, you got to go here and add that in thing in there. And it's like you just get this freedom when you kind of move to this more node or, you know, block-based structure where you just can yeah. kind of dump things in. Yeah. That's my views. Yeah. Braga, what do you, what do you think? Do you, do you agree? I, I assume you agree, but. <laughs> yeah. I, I think uh, if have hit on like the, the central point for me is that I came from, obsidian and i i love the like building up my graph and like working through these kind of this graph view interlinked what things fit together but in my head the idea of thinking like what is this object here and then kind of just having that tag being able to pull it automatically all around where it's useful that's kind of where the superpowers of tana come in that i haven't seen and like i i, I don't think you can do it to the same extent in Notion. Maybe I just haven't experimented with it enough, but it's just like, I'm just writing in my daily notes and then tagging this as like an idea. It's suddenly now in my idea workspace and then just setting the field to active. It's now in my active ideas workspace and you can jump around. Yeah, it's just that kind of thinking, what is this note? Do you have a space where you could share like what you're talking about that's, that's like, available to be shared <laughs> let me have a look around <laughs> yeah because obviously you you guys have like personal stuff in your tana my, my tana yes. is uh, aliens and and targets <laughs> so <laughs> yeah well i i can't I, I don't know about you guys but when when you put an emoji on something i i like putting emojis on pages and things i can't find a good one for people like the alien is just my default yes Yes, I think aliens is a good idea. The alien is your default for people. I think that really uh, delves into your brain right there. Like well, I mean, I, I do research psychology, so <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll actually, if you can share my screen now, I'll show you some things. Mm -hmm. So this is just my, this is my. I have a dummy Tana account that I use for demos, just because I <laughs> of this exact scenario. Um, so just seeing if something was relevant. And I think uh, something here. So this is my my day setup here uh, for like this is uh, an imagined sales work workspace. And all my days have meetings. They have tasks. They have drawers. So anything I want to make that's outside of these specific things, I can hide away in my drawer when I don't use them. So I have like a clean look. But basically, this space is what I'm talking about. So anything that I'm working on anywhere, like let, let's say I'm like this this. I'm deep inside. I'm deep inside a meeting here, and I make it to do here. Uh, let's not do that one. Let's just say uh, this is uh, like uh, demonstrate something clever. And I made this to do. It, it's going to be my to do list. Like we've seen, this isn't on magic, but like this is not for me because I need ever to look over this. So I just tag this review. Uh, I do. I do tag this review. Excuse me. Uh, there's some. Let's see. I need to allow. There we go. Back again. Pretend this didn't happen. Okay. So back here. It's it's live. We can't do that. <laughs> it sounds okay. like and my course now, videos. <laughs> in my today, like in my today, and in Ev's today, in her review space, uh, this will this will appear because I've tagged her in my, like, who's going to be the reviewer. This is Jens Christian's uh, setup, I think, from the Tana community. Yes. So basically, in her review space, like my to-do, which is still a to-do, it has all the properties of to-do or project, or in this case, like deal with like sales information, all these things that, like these properties, but it now also has a review, all the review properties, and it appears in my review workspace wherever I set this up. 
and you talked about like yeah no oh, there's a, that's another question for another time but yeah you can set up dashboards with this as well if you're interested there's like a way to do this this is just this is a saved view this isn't a very interesting one but like this is a like setting this is a, a dashboard i just while i was setting up a very complicated set uh, a work workout um workspace i just save this view so i go like, like when i'm navigating away wherever it's easy to come back you can save views with all these kind of different panels open at the same time it is possible it's not great yet but no, it is possible that that kind of looks like um the workspace is inside of obsidian so similar element anyway the workspace sure. core plugin yeah. um tft hacker good to see you here um yes i agree i i feel like grouping Okay, hey, my man. Uh, I feel like grouping some of these apps together doesn't quite work. I, I, I see the Rome Obsidian comparison. I, I can see that with Tana, it's by itself, and to an extent, I think Obsidian's also by itself because there's there's so many things you can do in Obsidian that don't quite work elsewhere, and there's things you can do in Tana yes. that again don't quite work elsewhere. So yep. What, yeah. what do you think is closest? Do you reckon Notion is closest or is it just like by itself? Lots of, lots of people that I talk to, uh, it's like a combination of Rome or LogSeq and Notion. I feel like it doesn't, I, I can't say it's a one-to-one -one comparison of Obsidian, even though I think I did say that in one of my videos. Um, I'm very sorry about that. Um <laughs> But I do, I do think like, cause a lot of people, I remember a lot of people saying to me, like, like they put Rome and Obsidian together and I'm like, I, I don't know how they're uh, like, I mean, they're alike in the sense that you can connect notes together, but I think that's the only thing. And when I kind of went over to Obsidian, I was like, I, I don't know how this is like Rome. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's just, uh, I, I think we naturally as humans want to, uh, want something to feel familiar and so yeah. we have to so so we're like oh well it's like this um and yeah. uh, uh but i think it's hard it is hard to define um but i i think it's i think it's uh, i feel like it's first in its class for bringing quite a few things together like the tags like taxonomies or all, all of that kind of thing it's kind of come together um i know i used to you're, you're bringing in the buzzwords sorry <laughs> Well, well, we've got soft brains in here, so we're going to need a definition. <laughs> I'm talking about smooth brains. Oh, smooth brains. Sorry, I got smooth the word brains. wrong. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We don't, <laughs> I just we're not call all it, wrinkly brains. I just like call them have. fields. I just say fields and data. That's it. I just going to put it out there. In in my video where I said the obsidian is like Tana in certain elements, it was because that's how I was like. I had to ground it to something. I couldn't just say yeah. node. And I was like, it's a node with a field and a node. And it was confusing. Obsidian, <laughs> you've got file and block. Notion, you've got page and block. Tana's just yeah. nodes. Yes, <laughs> like, everything's a node. <laughs> it's nodes all the way down. It's yeah. turtles well, all the way down. Yeah. Is it is it parent and grandparent and child? Like, is it that sort of node structure? Because that's, yeah. that's what I've seen yeah. in the documentation. Yeah. So if you want to like from the very top, right? Yeah. You yeah. you were gonna say? No, I, I was just gonna say like um, going from long form writing in Obsidian to Tana is like going from Markdown to just thinking and like outline structure, like thinking indentation, outdenting. Uh, yeah. I I am curious to see like how how that will work in the future. Obviously, in my video, I talk about long form writing and writing in general because i see yeah. like i write I, I don't want to say i don't outline because i use the headers and to me that's an outline but i yeah, don't yeah. do uh, the indenting outline stuff um no I, I don't really know what an outliner means when people say log seek is an outliner and tan is an outliner i can still outline in obsidian there's obviously a difference but to me i i just see bullets <laughs> yeah yeah, I just think it's bullets. Uh, I don't really do the. I don't do much indentation, only because I hate opening and closing things. Um, so that's so. I just, I just, I write log form. I wrote log form in Rome. Um, I just kind of ignore the bullets now, and I just treat it like a page. Uh, maybe I need to get used Benjamin, to the bullets. 
Benjamin in the chat has a comment that uh, outline typically has a drag and drop. And I think this idea of being able to move the elements up and down, that's kind of a central point of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to say when I, when I experimented in Obsidian, not being able to drag and drop things was a bit of a deal breaker for me. Well, there's it's funny, the, you there can... plugins. I, I wasn't, I was going to go to the plugins, but you can just highlight the text and drag and drop it up like you do in Word, but it is a little bit more clunky. Like it, it functions okay. like a word editor. You just highlight the text and move it up and down. You can highlight paragraphs, full pages if you want to, and drag up and down and across pages as well. Um, so it is That's doable. A idea. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that in Word. Yeah, yeah. You, well, wow. it, it turns the it turns the cursor into like a, a a dashed line with a square next to it. It's a really odd icon. Don't understand it. But, okay, all right. Yeah. I'm going to give that a go then. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Just learning so many things here. <laughs> I'm I'm not techie. Trust me. <laughs> I feel like I do, I need my node to be able to. Move. <laughs> you, you need your oh, in, in Notion. Uh, yeah, in Notion, you need your six dots to click on it. Yeah. When, uh, when they changed it from blocks to words, I was like, "Where's my, where, where's my block outline? Where's my, where's my button to push?" <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so we have a question from chat. Uh, what would the intention for making and further developing the app be from the creator's viewpoint? What's the vision of the company? That's a very big question. That I don't have an answer to. Yeah, and I also think that they're listening to their users. So whatever their vision is, like they're obviously, this is the period where they're finding out what is going to be to some extent. Like they, they'll have their clear vision, but like, yeah, the, the, the early users will have a big part in this, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. I think there are some apps that listen to their users well, other apps not so much. I mean, I don't want to call out Notion because I've been told that I call out Notion too much, but they've been asking for recurring tasks and databases for like two years. <laughs> Still doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Tarno is so small that it's still people, right? So if, if you have like a question about some technical stuff, you go to Steon and you can actually have a conversation with the person who built that piece of code. So like yeah. it's still at the point where all those things are like, it's, it's easier to talk to them about features uh, than it will be like a mature company. Oh, very true. Obsidian, I think, is still in that bracket as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still go to the Discord. Admittedly, it's harder to contact some of the developers. I mean, there's five, six now, six on the team, I think. Um, but you can still get in contact with people that do know a lot. The moderators are very good. And I think Tana does a very good job of that. Not, I'm not a fan of Slack, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, until Tana the more, Slack, the more people, The more people that come in, the the more crazy it gets, but uh, I kind of like that. I like jumping into the stream. I'm I'm in Discord like all the time, so I'm familiar with yeah. Discord. I went into Slack. I was like, Where, "Where's my yeah, buttons?" But... <laughs> <laughs> I just see them the everything? same. Discord is like Slack in dark mode for me. Yeah, you can change it to light mode, but I know what you mean. <laughs> I feel like work that would be Slack wrong. Well. I can't. I can't do Discord in light mode. <laughs> that's that's fair. I used to be a big light mode person. Now, as you can tell, it's it's dark mode. Only because I changed my CSS snippet in Obsidian, so I can actually see where my cursor is. I, I'm waiting for CSS snippets in Tana because, yeah, I lose the cursor a lot. Next question: What is all the hype about? Is it really a game changer? Now, obviously, I feel like I'm going to know the answer from uh, Ev. But we'll, we'll I wrote there. this question. Oh, <laughs> that's cheating. That's well, a peek behind the know. screen. I knew you would want to answer this question, Danny. <laughs> well, I'm going last. <laughs> so, so I can think of a good point. <laughs> Braga, what do you think? Is well, I, uh, yeah, I, I think it is, but I, I don't think looking at it from the, like the, personal knowledge management community is the most interesting answer, even though that's a cool community for this type of app. I just think that once uh, companies understand like what workflows you can set up like this and experiment with, like I've done for my team, uh, I, I mm -hmm. think this type of interface, whether or not it's Tana or some someone else that comes later, but this type of kind of emergent structure and restructuring of content and just being able to access all the information the way you can in Tana I think that's where this is going to be a game changer. 
if they can kind of market it and hit that segment in a good way, yeah. I think that's like the, the big thing here that you wouldn't see in Rome in the same way. Rome is too geeky. No. Tana can kind of be on the, on the light side of geeky. I do feel like it's less of the the outlier hobby app. Like like even as an early, like like it's literally still in kind of beta software kind of mode, and it's nice. Like it's yeah. like like if I was to show my Rome, like like to like if I was to invite people from my work into Rome, they'd be like what is this kind of like like it doesn't it doesn't look as polished and maybe it's not supposed to but if I invite them in here it's like oh okay this looks like professional software um kind of that that's how I kind of look like the look of it I would say um I'm also excited by it yeah like team stuff I think it's I think it's an interesting concept like I mean trying to trying to invite my team into any kind of software is like oh just yeah, a nightmare. painful experience um, but I feel like I could convince them just like, well, just put it anywhere. Like just drop, just just drop that anywhere and tag it. And then, you know, we'd be able to find it again. So I think I think that's interesting. I've got yeah. uh, uh I think I mean I just love I love to hear like all the different um ways that people like think to use stuff like this. Like on Monday, I'm gonna set up like a nature hub with one of the girls in my courses. Like she likes to go on walks and look at insects and birds and so she's gonna put all of that into town i'm like that's just cool yeah so kind I of like by, i mean yeah. yeah you could do that anywhere in any app i suppose but like i just love that people kind of start to use it and then think oh maybe i could put that in there um yeah, yeah. Uh, i was asked by an estate agent in chat the other day whether or not i can make like a sales setup for like house listings and i think yeah yes of course you can and it's very easy <laughs> And yeah. to your point, Deb, it wouldn't look like text about estate listings because I can make like, this is the deal. This is the house on 20, like this street. I can make that and have all the properties. Like th there's something there that's, that feels like a game changer. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess there's, a, there's something that I sort of I parked aside when you were talking earlier. Who do you think target the, the target audience for Tana is because Notion I think exploded because of the student exposure it got on YouTube through people like Thomas Frank and Ali Abdul uh, and then Obsidian, Rome, Remno, all those sorts of apps have sort of been in Notion shadow almost for student users and note takers. Where do you think Tana fits in the audience marketing space? Great question. I do think it sits in more that professional uh, space um, and I do think yeah. they want to move much more into multiplayer um, and really see how how that works for them yeah yeah, yeah. that's what they're that's what they're dog fooding internally right that's yeah. what they're doing internally that the companies run on Tana everything it's like from investment stuff to like projects project management tasks programming like agile yeah. whatever yeah, I think like working in a company that has to use like a pipeline stuff for sales and then you have teams here just killing the vibe for everyone. And then like you have all these different types of software and the idea of being able to like just pick off a couple of those subscriptions because you can build it easily in this shared space. And maybe you lure, maybe you lure people in by saying just write in your daily notepad. It's just your daily notepad. So don't, don't think about it. Think about it. It's just a notepad for your day. And then you can kind of introduce, well, this looks like it could go on your to-do list. Why don't you tag it? And then kind of use, yeah. you, suddenly you have like a whole team using this. Interesting. Yeah. So at the, at the end of my video, I said that Tana, I think, is a good collaborative outliner. And I think that's where it's game-changing superpower hype is. It's the collaborative ability inside mm -hmm. of a, a note taker because Obsidian... It's doable, but you need technical understanding how to how to use it, how to do it. It's much more of a personal tool, which is why I enjoy it so much. Uh, so I, I see, I guess I see Tone, no, Notion and Tana kind of as competitors because from what I know, a lot of business users in Notion, <laughs> they'll be doing the same sorts of things that you're talking about in Tana, which I don't, I don't know whether Tana want to take on Notion yet, but maybe that's something for the future for them. Danny, can I ask, what's your mm -hmm. daily page look like in Obsidian? What, what does a daily node look like to you? Like, 
Uh, very empty. Uh, ooh, I'm working with stuff at the moment, so it's going to look kind of disgusting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not saying yeah, it looks disgusting. It looks great. <laughs> yeah. So it's just a a query, a task query that I haven't looked at because it's a template that I made months ago. Um, sure. And then a daily log where just tasks have gone in from me pushing a hotkey. So th that's it. And then whenever I have any um, articles, notes, resources or anything, I'll then push the brackets and add it in either as a page or something similar. Yeah. Yeah, th this, yeah. yeah it's, it makes it's, sense. It's very simple, very basic. I, tr I treat my daily note as essentially a, a dump. <laughs> just Yeah. Dump whatever in there. And it's the same on my phone. When I go on my phone, I push um, the tick icon in, in the toolbar, which is a quick add. I just push it. I add the task. And then I add the priority. And it automatically goes to my daily note. And then it will surface in the task query when it needs to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I think like this this idea of dumping stuff in daily notes, I think that's where, like for, for me, Tana just clicks in a way that Obsidian doesn't. That That's the big thing of like, because I'm, just dumping things. But for me, sometimes I'm dump dumping a, a to-do and sometimes I'm dumping like a full article, which in my Obsidian setup, I I'd obviously just bracket and link. But sometimes it's a meeting with someone and like like the ease with which I can have those coexist and like be, be the same thing, but then like under like the underlying structure makes them different. I think that's that's one of the main thing that, things that I like. All right, yeah, with... So whenever I have a, so I call them sources, um, they could be whatever you want, but if it's a, a video a podcast uh, or a meeting a, a conference call or whatever, I will, I will use my hotkey to make it <laughs> with, with the quick ad. So when, when you add the hashtag super tag for meeting, I'm using the template that does that, which is why in my oh, video, yeah. I said that super tags are like templates. Uh, yeah. So I, I had to set that up, like configure it the same as same way you configure a super tag. So it's, they're doable. They're just different processes to get to the same result, I think. Yeah. I think so, yeah. When I was using Obsidian or when I tried to set it up, I was doing the same thing. Have a template um, and then that just gets inserted. And That's yeah. all the mess that you saw um, yeah. <laughs> on my screen straight away. It was <laughs> me working on uh, weekly and monthly templates that automatically generate weekly notes, monthly notes, et cetera, with the appropriate yeah. dates and stuff. Um, but, yeah, that's... That's going further than most users need to go. It's me just experimenting because I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah totally. Uh, right. A question from chat. Let's uh, yes. change the screen. Yes. That was a quick answer. answer. <laughs> yes. Having used both, yes, a thousand times, yes. Please, please let me replace stuff like that. I think so, and I I think it's um I think it's interesting to have um, your knowledge management in the same place as you have tasks, meetings, um, all of that kind of thing. I'm uh, I kind of am trying to currently build out processes for our company, and it's like, well, it's kind of interesting to have you know if you if you're assigning a task to somebody that the process kind of is there, and they can just look at it and open the node and just do the thing. Um, so I, I think having all of that together is yeah. game changer, let's just say. I, yeah. <laughs> so, so some could say that like that there's, there, there are obviously bad things about have, having everything at the same in the same yeah. place. But being able to like, as you say, like I'm writing a task, but then I'm referencing a, like a section of our onboarding manual for the company because that's where this is relevant from. And this is the deal that I'm talking about. The, 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 mm -hmm. Like all those things that you can just pull in. Yeah, I think uh, stuff like Confluence should definitely, this would be better. I, I I don't know if this is too much of a peek behind the screen, but I, I seem to recall talking to one of the people in the Tana team about this kind of idea of, of you having your personal space. And then you, like, as you're working with different projects, you're kind of just docking into those workspaces. Mm. Like, because you, you can still work in your daily, daily node, but then having access to the super tags of this company, you can now just tag it there and then send it out. You're still working in your workspace. And this, this kind of idea of just having my, my second brain and then docking it to the company without, like as long as you kind of manage the, the, the nitty gritties here of ownership, 
privacy. Yeah. And I think there's there's something really cool about that. Mm. I think I saw one of the videos from the founders where he'll start something in his daily note and then and then I think you can move it or something into into the company. Yeah. I don't know if that was a thing. Because you have daily notes in, in each of the workspaces as well. This, yeah. this is one, one of the things I, I find maybe maybe not weakest, but it's it doesn't, uh, like I haven't still gotten into it yet. Yeah. Um, I suppose you'll, yeah, you'll have a common daily note. Um, is it something I put in the, in the Slack, uh, probably like, the second day is because there's different workspaces. When you click on daily note, it goes to like your daily note, not yeah. whatever workspace you was in. And that's one of those yeah. things I was like, I know I can change, but I just want to click it and take it there. I think they're working on it. I'm not sure, but yeah. daily notes to me is like central. I have a hotkey specific for my daily note <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah. I don't even know what it is. What is it? Con control or why my fingers just do it. Yeah, and yeah. when I had to think, how do I get back there? I was like, mm, <laughs> I need a, yeah. Well, there is there is you can like you can customize hotkeys for that to get mm -hmm. to your daily note but are you talking about getting to the daily note of the of the workspace that you're in that you're in yeah 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 because yeah, that's was... what doesn't make sense to me i don't want to get like i have a daily note it is a note like having separate daily notes is very kind of uh, confusing to me that's why when people ask me in obsidian can i have another day i was like yeah but why you just need the one and when i saw you have your daily there's multiple yeah. i'm like why do you have multiple daily notes for a workspace? I'm confused. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's mm. hard for me to get my head around. Something uh, you said about like, all-in-one app sort of thing. How do you manage your, your calendar events, scheduled things with Tana? Is it you have your whatever calendar app and then you have a schedule of sorts in Tana? Or how does it work? I, I do, I, yeah. 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 I just copy them over. <laughs> I just look at what I have in Gmail and then I go, okay, that's going in my schedule. But I do, it's not just like, let's just have the notes here. It's then I can take notes about those meetings. I can put tasks in once they're done. So I've got like a bit of a meeting template that I use. Is it a template or a super tag or same it's thing? A super, so I, it's a super tag. Okay. It has a template. Like, I don't know, it's default content. <laughs> That's why I asked. I'm like, I, I got people I got people moaning at me saying super tags aren't templates. I'm like, but what are they then? Like Well, I have, super tags. I, I have I have templated content in the super tag. Yeah. It's okay. like a it's like notes, agenda, actions. I don't know. That's a template to me. But okay. one of the things you said, Danny, uh, in your video, your highly contentious video about Tana. <laughs> Is that why would you change a template and then want it to retros like retroactively affect the things that you have templated before? And that to me stands out. Obviously, I want that. If I like, if I improve my kind of template, then super tag for something. Say, say like this is my workflows for like sales. So I improve the deal template. Say I I input a search inside my template so that this now like finds all active tasks that Ev is doing because that's relevant right now to my w workflow obviously i want that to affect everything every object that is a deal or every object that is a script if i'm writing scripts should be affected by how i'm now thinking about scripts because now i'm thinking about scripts as this this is kind of the thing i mean like i think that's like an, an important uh, distinction between templates which is uh, are applied once uh, and the, the super tags yeah, I, I made sure I made the point about super tags being able to go backwards and forwards because I know it's yeah. important. Uh, but even you saying that I'm I'm trying to envisage something in my head where it's where where I can see me use it because all of the templates that I have inside of Obsidian, obviously, um, are headings. And disregarding the fact Tana doesn't have headings, even if I was to change the template super tag information. I wouldn't want it to change it for the pages I already have because I already have information underneath those. So I've uh, I've used that template and it's changed the way I want it to. And then if I change the template in the future, I don't want the old ones broken, updated. Uh, so maybe there'd need to be a, uh, I don't know, maybe there is a, a setting to say, don't change the ones in the past. <laughs> I, I don't know well, if that's possible. Yes, you, you could do that. Okay. If, like so, yeah, yeah there were ways it will you could do retain that retain the information yes so however retain... you had it it will retain that it will retain all that information 
But then, yeah. like, let's say you had a node and you had a whole lot of stuff under that node and then you said, oh, actually, I want to add this node in. You'll, it'll just add underneath. Yeah. Add yeah. Right. Or if you change the name of a field because now your categories yes. are slightly different, that'll go back, but it's not going to delete any information. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I use DB folder for that in Obsidian. So, <laughs> so I can't I can't forget anything or miss anything. It does it all for me. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm not manually going in to change all of those pages. That's far too much effort. Yeah. I, yeah. I think like comparing a tool with Obsidian and comparing a tool with Obsidian and the plugins is two different games yeah. to play. I think that's a question later on. So we might get back to that because there's another question in cool. chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you see it working for students? Oh, hello, yes. Giovanni. Good to see you. Um, I see it. It could work for students. Yes. My my one, my I guess my biggest question mark at the moment for students is when Tana comes out is the price. That would be my biggest question. Whether there's a scholarship or something they're planning on doing, I don't know. But most students, because I was a student not so long ago, they, they want free stuff. <laughs> Notion was free. Obsidian's free. Sync isn't free. Tana is what, $10, pounds? A month? Ten I think it's ten dollars a month. That's what they're saying. Yeah, so that that would be my first question for students use. But when it comes to the actual tool, yeah, certainly, I think. Yeah. I don't see why it couldn't. Yeah, uh, it there's some notes. interesting stuff. Yeah. Interesting stuff about like how if you're doing study groups or classes together, how you can kind of share uh, templates or oh, some, yeah. like share workspaces. Yeah. That'll be very interesting. Like you can help each other learn. I, it's funny i spoke to i spoke to robert about this as a student myself most of the people in my course studied because of the maybe because of the course i was on it was very free-flowing we could research what we wanted i have never found a reason to research with someone else before never <laughs> the, the only time i've done some sort of research project with someone else was you do that part i'll do this part and then we bring it together in the end so when i heard collaborative knowledge work i was add big question marks because I just don't know what it would look like or how it would work because yeah. I know I work very different to a lot of other people. So, yes. But yeah, if there is a project where that's happening, I, I want in, I want to see what's going on. You can join the town of Fast Start Workspace. <laughs> There's the plug. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very interesting. We're just still breaking stuff in there. It's very similar to my sync vault, my obsidian yeah. sync vault. It's, it's yeah. just here's stuff. Let's see what we can do. See what doesn't That's work. It. Right. This question's for. Um... Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay. Um, all right. How am I going to answer this question? Um, Are you going to go political? I... Or... <laughs> no, I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> Um, no, I think that ultimately there's probably a few things and I was deep in Rome, but I still have, I still had a lot of things in Notion. So, you know, they, the, with Rome, I loved writing in there. I had my daily note in there. I had my knowledge, um, kind of my knowledge library, all of that. And I, I really loved, I loved the flow, but there was so much that I kept in Notion, like uh, all the articles that I wrote and being able to sort and you know, data and, and all of that thing and kind of work together with my team. So um, I think that when I saw Tana, I really feel like it brought both together and, and I've now I've merged most of those two together. There's a couple of things still in Notion that have formulas and things like that um, that uh, are still there. So I'm eagerly waiting. Um, but I think, I think the second reason is that I love... Um, apps where there's an engaged community and not saying that the wrong community is not engaged. I think we all wanted to be engaged, um, but there was just other factors involved in that. And so I love the excitement. I love the energy that everyone gets from each other. And I found that in the Notion community when I was there, but I just really miss that. And I miss, I miss just like just talking to people about workspaces and what are you doing? And, oh, that's so fun. Like, and yeah, I feel like there wasn't a space for that in Rome. So I, uh, yeah, I'm really happy. I think this is a, a good chance for uh, Braga and I to bring up something we spoke about before the stream started, which is the, mm. the community shifts 
or where they may have moved to because from the 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 devil's perspective from Tana I feel like I I've sort of like got the wrath of the Rome cult a bit uh but I'm like this isn't Rome this is Tana so we we were talking about this previously do you think a lot of the Rome users and the Rome mentality has shifted towards Tana open space <laughs> I don't really see it. I see maybe the good part. I don't know. Like um, I, I just think a lot of people were, I felt maybe a bit outside it or uncomfortable um, with maybe some of the, the references to, you know, Rome cult or, you know, different things that happened. And I think that people just want to be excited about, about the tool that they use. And I think, I think that's, that's what I see. The passion. Yeah. yeah. Passion and, like, a pretty high level of terminology, I would say. <laughs> Ontology. Ontology. God. <laughs> I, I wonder I wonder if there was a search spike like for ontology like <laughs> yeah, define we ontology. Should, uh, we should find out. I definitely searched it before I made a video about it. Pretending I definitely I knew what it looked was. it up. <laughs> I, I reckon most of the people following Tana was like define ontology. What does this mean? And then just yeah. spewing something somewhere like oh yeah yeah I know. Yeah no, I I can honestly admit I had no idea like. I knew it was part of philosophy because epistemology is an area that I've studied and I knew ontology is important. But I'm like, I don't know, that's not my area. And everyone's referencing books. I'm like, nope, nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in my lane over here, psychology. <laughs> Slightly teasing my next video video, I'm just gonna ask Lex what ontology is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I like the cues that, that Lex came up with. Um before I get to David's question, um, Ev, I want to ask you, you mentioned yeah. you like referenced or you brought in the sources similar to Roman Tana. How do you collect, I guess you could say, the, the blogs, the web pages, the videos, the podcasts, and bring that into Tana? Because to me, all, all of my articles, the paper stuff, the web pages, the blogs and stuff is Zotero, and then I ex might import it into Obsidian. Yep. How do you do that? If you can screen share, great. If not, talk. <laughs> I, I do it with Readwise. Um, so I use, I don't use Readwise Reader. Sorry, everyone. Um, they didn't let me in for a year. Um, <laughs> but I do have an invite now, so don't worry. Um, but I've only had it for a week. So I've been using Matter, which I love as a, um, a Read It Later app. And then I also use Glass, um, which is um, a collaborative note-taking uh you can take notes from any web page um, and it's it's a community base so everyone can see the notes that you take which i i really love um so yeah it's 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 kind of cool so i use both of those and i use readwise to then get all of my notes i used to use them to get into rome um and uh and so i've been experimenting with tana paste and i have a little text expander script that brings all of my Readwise things into Tana every day. Lol. Look at you, yeah. writing scripts. And... I know, kind of broke me, but <laughs> a couple of people. That's why you're in the community, because people help you. I was like, I need some help with this. I don't know how it works. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, um, so it's, it's, working, it's working good as long as I remember to uh, do the daily Readwise input. Otherwise, then I miss things. Okay. Braga, are you the same using Readwise? No. No, I I, take, like, I feel I missed something here because I just take all my notes directly in Tana uh, and before then directly in Obsidian. And I, I don't use any like note-taking apps or anything on the outside of that. Maybe maybe like a scratch pad. This. What, what sort of notes do you, like, not how you take the notes, but what sort of sources are you using? Are they videos, podcasts, like yes videos podcasts books uh like all sorts of things but like i'm not a structured note taker like i have to say that like most of my notes are functional just like or either to do's or like uh, like meetings and deals and stuff like this or actual like scripts that i'm working on writing so um it's, it's, it's rarer for me to mm. so, so when i like when i do take notes from books i kind of try to send it straight away into like its function so to do 
mm. da, da, or, or like idea or whatever it is. Or, um, so I, I try to kind of send it straight to something. Yeah, yeah I think sense. that's interesting. One of the, one my, of the girls, yeah. uh, sorry, one of the girls in, in, my, uh, in my course just showed me just kind of the, one of the rabbit holes she was going down. And she does the same in that, like, she took this note and she says, oh, I'm going to turn this into a task. I need to do that. And so she just, d like, just write in, in Tana because you can put anything anywhere and tag it. Um, and yeah. so it's kind of, I think it's interesting because in the past I think I felt like, okay, you, have, you take the notes, you process the notes, and then you put the notes somewhere. But they kind of can be really fluid like that. And then that just shows yeah. up in her task list. And then it's connected back to that note and she's just going wild-eyed with it. Yeah. No, I remember the first time I, I installed Obsidian, I started doing what I think a lot of people have done, which is like to have the entire Wikipedia just from my own perspective. <laughs> in Obsidian. Like, I all wanted, all like, in atomic no notes. Yeah, yes. The knowledge graph of all my knowledge. And I think this is kind of a, like, an, like a, a response to that is that I don't need like all my, my thinking because I'm thinking it. What I need is like my takeaways that I can actually act, like, act upon. That's kind of my, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I like it. I, I mean, mm. I, I, I joke about Atomic Notes because I'm not a fan because uh, I, I tried using Atomic Notes and it got out of hand way too quickly because of the amount of content that I consume. If I was, for example, to read an article that's 15 pages, academic article that's 15 pages, you're looking at like 20, maybe 30 different Atomic Notes. I read four or five a day. <laughs> my, my graph's massive already. So I... I, I couldn't yeah. sustain that at all. So now my, I think because my notes are less actionable uh, in the short term, I think my note taking is different because of that. Right? When people can look at my Obsidian Publish and see my notes and some of the yeah. pages are seven, 8,000 words long of just different concepts, ideas and links. And yes, I have tasks in there to questions to explore, but yeah. I, I won't get an answer. I, I can't get an answer to a lot of the stuff that I take. It's, I need to bring sources together, have like 12 references to justify an idea or a point or a claim and then critique it and go backwards and forwards. And yes, I think it's a different type of note taking to what of most course, people yeah. need. Yeah. Yeah. I find, well, most of mine is uh, like, like writing and note taking is my thinking process. So as I kind of have, like I have kind of, I collect a lot of things like, articles books whatever as i'm as i'm writing i will collect things kind of as prompts so like oh that's interesting yeah. and so then that kind of i throw that in and then i just use that then to kind of write so i lots of people will ask me like well how do you structure an atomic note i'm like oh, i don't really know i just have a i have a concept and i just start writing um like i don't really have any other prompts other than that and so i yeah i think i think everyone has their own kind of like take on it from what their outcome is you know yeah. so it's yes. it's like yeah and i think that's that's the beauty of it yeah yes yeah okay i'm, I'm sure i find a lot of like i played a bit of like i made like the the, the tana version of like the discourse graph like maggie from the tana community was talking about it in chat and I, I just i just took a screenshot of her structure and i kind of made it to play around with like a few full like kind of questions claims evergreen kind of setup but I, yeah I, I find i'm sure i would find using it but i don't use it like my writings are tasks or my takeaways i try to bring them into some like finished kind of product uh, piece of content that i want to like do something yeah like. so it's more usable like it, it's act like it, it's in, like actionable kind of pretty much straight away yeah it's actionable yeah. or acted upon that's kind of yes. the, uh, the, the idea that i try to have but like it's not it's not a set rule and most of it yeah. is just because i don't have time to write <laughs> I've, I've got notes in my vault that i haven't touched for like three four months because i'm still like thinking over a lot of the stuff in the note to try and get my head around it because mm -hmm. it's too complex to be like oh yeah that's the answer um yeah i say i say ecological psychology and i like like crawl up on the floor, I'm like oh no, T too many, too many open questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm reading no, a book. Us, that's uh, like us smooth pages. brains don't go there. Us smooth brains stay away from those. I want to go there. I just, 
but I do, you know, I most of my notes end up with a question at the end. I think that's I think that's a good yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, um yeah. and and it just then that just brings it back up and and I find I find the same. I've got, you know, notes where I haven't looked at them, but they are kicking around in there and at some point you go back and you're like, "Oh yeah, okay. I got that." Or it connects something connects to it. Yeah. Yes. Right. Next question, David. I, I know I paused you for a while there. <laughs> uh, oh, you, you've been left out now, Ev. Uh, how how do you apply okay. template changes to the created notes using them in Obsidian? I also miss saying LogSeq. Hmm. I haven't explored LogSeq for a while, but uh, and, and that's what I love about the super tab concept. Okay. Um, how do I apply template changes? I'm going to be completely honest. I don't. Well, actually, I'll keep that up. Uh, I don't because I don't need to. The, the templates that I use are for daily notes, which once I've used the daily note, I don't tend to go back to it. It's just somewhere to dump it for the day and then the next day. So if I need to change the template for the next day, then I will. Then the other templates that I use are templates when creating projects or creating articles, working notes, same difference. Uh, and when I'm in an article, when I'm writing something around whatever the topic is, I will change the heading structure all the time because there's going to be different concepts, ideas, topics that emerge that I'll be like, actually, no, that one needs to be heading one, move this to a heading two, or maybe I just extract it and make it its own, own note somewhere else. So I don't need to reapply the template anywhere. The only time I would need to reapply a template is if I'm missing metadata, i.e. like YAML, front matter, yeah. fields, properties, same thing. Um, but for that, I use DB folder, which is a plugin in Obsidian that manages all that for me. You could use meta edit or insert like four other different plugins that do it, but that's the one I choose. So I don't need to. Um, I know it's kind of a get out, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know how to, I, I didn't. That's like, I couldn't, I didn't do it well. And that's what I, one of the things I liked about Tana. So nice and quick. Do you, uh, Ev, do you use, like, utilize the going backwards feature of the super tags or are you still going? I think, I think as I've been building, I have been. I think you do it less and less as you develop your, your workspace. But I think in the beginning, it's great because you, like, if you think, oh, you know what, I do need a field for that or actually I don't like how that is, I'm going to change that around. Like, it, it is, it's nice. But I think once you have, a lot of um, things like, you know, like let's say a lot of tasks and then you change the task thing. I don't think you need to go back and change everything. Um, but I think there are probably instances where it's good. Like let's say like a people tag, for instance, that is something that you might, that, that you would use. It's not like a forward, forward moving only. It's that, yeah, okay, I might add, you know, this field. And so you go back and you can, you um, update all the people fields. Yeah, and it's something also, that like, annoyed me in Notion. Now. Yeah, like in Notion, when you apply a template to a page, it's like you can't, if you change the template, it's like you can't, there's no literally no way to go back. And that used to annoy me. Yeah. So, yeah. But I also think that like at the stage that Tom is in, having the opportunity to go back and make these retroactive changes, if they update the functionality, like for instance, for like all these automated fields, that they are added now, like auto instancing fields, having had, like if I had to go back and do that manually, instead of like automatically adding like the, like whatever, uh, what was the one, uh, the, 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 the one that fetches the today node that this node resides under instead of doing created on, like being, having, yeah, those things would be. Auto, auto initialization of the day node. Yes, I'm glad I could just okay. update that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Straight over my head, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one use that I was, like, while you were talking, I have people notes inside of my Obsidian where I have like the YouTube channel there, um, website links at the top. And uh, there, there was a time where I was grabbing their Instagram accounts and I don't need them anymore. I guess that would be the only potential yeah. use case I see um, because some of the people I like, don't have their Instagram accounts for, or they didn't have an Instagram account. So it's kind of like a, a redundant field, but because I rarely go into those people pages, I don't care that it's messy. And that's something I love about Obsidian yeah. is I can just leave it. Like I, my, 
I think I had 4,000 notes, uh, more three and a half thousand notes in my sources that I hadn't touched for about nine months. And I just went on a one day, don't know why I just decided, you know what, I'm going to sort it out. <laughs> but they were there for <laughs> over nine months, just a mess. I was still referencing them and using them, but organization, they were a mess. I sorted them out using VS Code and find and replace because I'm not manually doing that, but all of them. No. <laughs> but I got there. <laughs> uh, I will say that if you did that in Tana, if you deleted the Instagram field, Every person that you added Instagram to would still have their Instagram field there. It just wouldn't yes. like it would change colors. So you could see this is not part of the super tag anymore. So you wouldn't lose any data. Uh, I did learn that. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did learn that one. Right. Uh, TFT had another question. It seems Tana has built in. I was like, what's that word? Built in features for many things that other tools need plugins at the moment. Uh, do you see long term that Atana will have as many plugins as other tools, or is there less need for them? So this actually, I'm gonna bring up the the questions on my page because I'm pretty sure there was a. Uh, oh, why can't I? I can add me. There we go. Because uh, there was a question down here with regards to like what is an add-on third-party integration. I'm gonna have to try and find it. Uh, oh, the question's actually gone down there. But yeah, so with regards to plugins, integrations, all that stuff. What, I guess, to summarize the question, what counts as the app? Like what features counts as the app? E uh, either of you start. Don't know. Is it all the features? I mean, I don't have any plugins, I don't think. Um, the, the only thing I have is the stylus plugin on Chrome, which I have a few little, um, a few little CSS things happening. Oh, in general, got you. Yeah, because so what one of the comments I got quite a lot was Tana can do this in the core app. Obsidian, you need plugins. So Obsidian's not as good because you need plugins. So it's kind of like Obsidian as a core app compared to Tana is worse. Yeah. When you add plugins to Obsidian, oh, it's different. Yeah. And I'm like, well, the Obsidian plugins yeah. don't work outside of Obsidian. So it's no true. Yes. Well, I, so I think so are they yeah. are they just a part yeah. of Obsidian now? Like as a thing, yeah. Yeah. I, get what you're I, I think like the things that are native to Tana that, that feel really good about them being native to Tana is because that like the, the fact that they are these first class citizens in Tana. So the way queries and super like these these schemas and super tags work. Um, like if you add I think even adding those as like a plugin to another app will not have the same kind of feeling that you get in Tana because they're so natively integrated. But yeah, I, I think I think Tana will have a lot of plugins as well. I think there will be a marketplace for plugins. I think there's a lot you could do that they're not doing right now. Uh, mainly one just like importing and exporting data automatically. Uh, that is going to be like make a lot of cool work workflows. I think yeah, so. didn't really answer your question though. <laughs> I think I think it gets close. I'm going to tick that off so I can um, bring us Let's back see. and then bring TFT's Look at question. That. Little tickle. Oh, oh yeah, I, I did the first two as well. I didn't um, say that. <laughs> no, it's been like half an hour since. You know, I I asked I asked you to um to do a uh, a little um confetti when the um when it gets ticked, but he said no. I have that in Morgan. Like Morgan's my, I guess you could say like calendar front end of Google Calendar. And every time I take a task off in Morgan, it's like confetti. I'm like, yes. I want the confetti. <laughs> it's it's not as like in your face as the sun is like rainbow unicorn across the screen. <laughs> but... uh, uh, yeah. So sort of expanding on TFT's question around like plugins, tools, I think, so for me, when I see the preferences tab in Tana, that's like the settings tag, uh, the settings tab inside of Obsidian, like the, the core plugin settings. So in my head, yes, I'm Obsidian biased, but the community plugins is part of the settings. It's, it's a, yeah. I think it's called Tana Labs. I'm going to go into Tana, Tana and check Labs. that I've got that. Yeah, yep. Tana Labs. So I would see the preferences of Tana as the core plugins and then Tana yep. Labs as the community plugins. For Obsidian, that's in my head how I sort of associate them. Um, so maybe Tana Labs becomes the community plugins of Tana with other people adding in imports and exports. What do you what do you think about that? 
I think there'll be a full marketplace. There might even be opportunities for creators to make money selling apps. I think I think it'll go more of that yeah. kind of route. Fair. Yeah, I, I mean, Notion still doesn't have a plugin marketing place. They've just got templates. <laughs> like lots and lots and lots of templates. Yeah. Right. But it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah? No, no, no more. I, I didn't okay. have any. <laughs> nothing, nothing to see here. Nothing, nothing uh, to see. So, who is suitable slash not suitable for I, I assume that was Tana. Um I think that was me putting it in. I don't know I don't remember. So who's suitable for Tana? I think for for me, anyone. Like anyone is suitable for Tana. Would you guys agree? Yeah. I don't see who's not suitable for it. Well, if you're very set in your way of working with information, uh, I think maybe not. But but, but yeah. I think I mean, I think, I, I think that's more of a, yeah. I, th I think this, I think this is very true for most apps. I, I was, I was having, having a conversation on Twitter about this with regards to complexity. And if you reduce all the apps to their just basic forms, all the apps can be used. It's just as soon as you start yeah. getting more complex and adding features, adding plugins, adding fe uh, queries and all the other stuff, that's where the limitations start coming in because like the further you go in Obsidian, the, the more code looking your pages can get. The further you go yeah. in Notion, the more databases and links and links inside of databases and formulas and role, it can get confusing. And Tana, so, some of the stuff in inside of the queries, you look at and go, this isn't English anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, think so. I feel, I feel like it's simple enough for anyone to use, right? Like, like write something, tag it. Um, yeah. But then you can get more complex than that. And I like that. I like that you can get as complex as you need to get or as simple as you need. That's kind of a, yeah. yeah. That's something I've spoken with. So on the PKM podcast that I do with John um, mm. every Saturday, we talk about personal knowledge management systems and apps and stuff. And something that we go over quite a lot is because we're both from Notion, to get started in Notion, you can't afford really not to use databases you, you need to use databases to some extent to really get any sort of use out of it. Um, yes, you can use it. It's just a page with pages inside of it. That there's not that much to it. Whereas Tana, you can get the use without needing to know all of the queries. <laughs> uh, same with yeah, Obsidian. Yeah. You can get to use it without using any plugins. I didn't use plugins for the first year and a bit of using it. So I think yeah. the onboarding for Tana, I think, would be easier than Notion. But yeah. Yeah, hot take yeah. <laughs> I think it was, I was going to say something similar that Obsidian and Tana feel very similar in that you can just start, as long as you understand it's great to have a daily note pad, like you're already kind of, you'll already have find some use for it. You know, you're not really using it, but like you're, you're already finding a good use. And then your friends who have a, you have a shared workspace with can create your structure and you can just like take advantage of the fact that you have information available where you have your notepad. And then, yeah, mm. you can kind of, kind of grow from there. Uh, is that a question? I see a question mark. Yeah, it is a question. There wasn't a cue, so I wasn't sure. Uh, oh, I've hidden. Ev. Whoa, that's way too big for me. There we go. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. So uh, how much of an authority would you consider yourself on Tana? Like, would you put yourself in the top 20 of people who talk about and inform the public about Tana? I don't know who this was directed at, but I'm certainly not at the top because I am, I'm an Obsidian user and I don't explore Tana. So not me. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how many people there are. You are, Ev, so like, 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 <laughs> yeah, you're that's very what much I was at thinking. the top of people speaking about Tana. Well, I would uh, say you are, you are as well, Braga, because you're doing videos and you're in the community. I mean... I've learned a lot from your videos too. I don't think there's that many. I mean, there's hype there's about it, but there's mm -hmm. not actually that many people who are creating content and, and all of that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think. But I still feel like when I get into the Slack community, I still feel like there's some questions where I'm like, mm, leaving that to somebody else. <laughs> like, I'm no, I was like, oh, my gosh. So, like, I feel like I'm, I'm just a big pragmatic person. So if you ask me a really practical question, I'm going to tell you the practical answer. I'm going to tell you to keep it simple. I'm going to tell you not to overthink it. Just, you know, like just keep it the way that, you know, it's easy to use. 
Whereas I think there's other people who are much better at thinking through things and, you know, like like I'm, I'm in awe of Maggie Appleton because she just has these amazing ways to think about yeah. things. I'm just not at that level. Um, but I think everyone has their own, their own take on it um, and, and their own kind of authority maybe. Um, in that yeah. Way. That's a good way to, to talk about it. Like yeah. my, my focus is always going to be like, what kind of apps can I create in his, here? Like kind of, maybe commercial is the right kind of word. I'll have my own yeah. personal knowledge management, but that's kind of my focus for it. Um, it's kind of like a, an abstract, welcome to Danny's brain sort of point here. Uh, but I was watching something on Minecraft, for those unfamiliar. It's a game on PC. I don't play it, but it's popular. Um, and they were talking about the best redstoners, which is a, a part of the game. Yeah. And the argument was... Well, there isn't a best one because there are so many different types, whether you're using mm. a note block, whether you're using commands and loads of other different things. So when when you say who's the best red zone or who's the most popular Tana or the best Tana or Obsidian or whatever thing, it depends what you're looking for and what the Notion consultancy have done is they've guided you to here's Notion for business, here's Notion for people yeah. doing yeah. this thing, accounting or whatever. And I think that's the same. You need to sort of, look for someone that knows the app but also knows the field that you want to use the app in because if you ask me about accounting and using tano i mean i don't know yeah. the app and i don't know the field so i'm useless <laughs> but <laughs> yes I, I think you're yeah. right i think so good i make sense nice <laughs> uh right let's uh let's bring back the question so how do you write in tana um keyboard <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think i think this was one of the questions that was put on like at the bottom of my YouTube video because uh, there isn't any headings or any sections or anything like that uh, to mark down yet. I, I said yet in the video, people seem to have forgotten that I, that word is there because uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're working on it. How do you, do you just separate them with indents and look at the whole page? Do you bold things? Like how do you navigate the large pages? I guess would be a refined yeah. question. Feel free to um, share. Um I I mean I use bold. <laughs> I guess that's like the only <laughs> yeah, the kind of thing you can do. So I do bold headings and then I like I said before, I don't indent very often. Um I just have long pages with a bold heading and I do um like enter enter, so there's like like a, a space. So it doesn't Do you have a, like an example space. somewhere? Yep. Let me I let me know do. when I can share. <laughs> um hang on let me let me try and find something braga while well, she's uh looking for that what, what about you yes i'm trying to find some examples as well but yeah oh, look at that but both of both of you are, are looking for examples and here's me just talking <laughs> out of my bottom trying to fill some time while we find something <laughs> okay okay here we go let's let's see See, oh, God. it's it's the humor you see blue danny's over my shoulder the devil is he, speaking at me make jokes it's it's funny fill the time <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, all right share my screen share my screen quick right. there you go Thank okay you these are my me. these are my cluster notes um and so uh there's actually no headings in here but you can see like i do have like just uh, like just a blank like bullet a blank node yeah um and then if i wanted to add heading i would just do that that's just what i do so i guess it's a question i don't know how long your notes get but one of the points that i raised in my video is obviously i use the outline plugin in obsidian to jump up and down pages uh, and yeah. i spoke with robert and he said you could put nodes in and i was like i'm not faffing with that how do you is is that how you jump up and down pages like you just zoom out and zoom back in or i do yeah so this is like a this is my newsletter from yesterday so it is like quite you can see it's quite a bit longer that's a long mm. one. Um, I don't know. I just, so if I need to kind of zoom in on something, I will. Um, and I suppose that's probably why you should indent things because then you could, you could actually then just like uh, zoom in on that. But I just find, I, I hate opening and closing the nodes. It just bugs me. Um, so I just keep it all in one one long thing. Um, but usually, yes, if I need to zoom in or focus on something, I'll just focus in on that node and then I'll come back out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Braga, are you sharing? Yeah, please. Yeah. So good? I have a couple of examples here. 
Um, let me first say, like, uh, I'm not there yet when it comes to writing long form in Tana, because um, there's a lot of things. Like, my main my main writing space is always going to be in Obsidian, where I have like, but it's, that's not true. My main writing space for now for longer form stuff is in Obsidian, and my main problem is like the pag pagination stuff. The fact that like after a hundred or so, like in my tables, if I have a hundred or more elements, I have to have like pagination just why why can't i decide that <laughs> uh, anyways but like here's here's me making a script this is a narrative this is a podcast script we do stories fairy tales this is aladdin actually uh these are a three-part podcast uh, episode uh, so here i first basically outline what i need to happen in this story this is norwegian apologies to any non-norwegians there must be some um I say, these are the main things that are happening in these segments. I've now structured my story, right? And I have the same thing for part two here and part three here. And then if I just expand these, like these are now headings and I indent underneath them to write and paragraphs are notes. And then I would outdent like, and this is a problem with Tana. If I outdent this, it goes down to the bottom it doesn't go straight out, do you understand? Because of the structure. <laughs> like, because it, it's now a sibling to its parent. Yes. If that makes sense. I'm not, yeah. yeah. It's previous parent. Like, I, I was shown a way to do this better, uh, but I can't recall right now. And this is one of the things, like, if they do a document thing, like, they, ha they have to make smarter, basically. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So, so I have indentations and even further, like, this is an adaptation. So all of this is restructured and rewritten from like the original Aladdin manuscript, which is here. And what I do is I just basically make an empty sibling node and indent the text in like a children of that. So I can just hide it like this. So this is like that section hidden away. And then I can keep working like this. So now I close this segment. This is like, I could go in here and work in details on just this, or I could just like have them like this. Uh, or I could, this is just this episode. I can have them like this. These are subheadings underneath that episode. I can keep like just working in, like this and go into any like level of detail I need to. Um, this is a script for the the Tana video I did did the other day, uh, and I just wrote it down um, like this. And then later, when I sectioned it, I basically uh, like this is all. There's no intro like part which is intro. I don't know anything yet. I'm just writing. And then I just made a new node and indented everything underneath it and then made the, the top node a check mark because I was working with this and I wanted to know which ones were recorded or not. And this is not structured at all. There's no super tags yet. There will be, but I will live with the pain of writing without any structure for a bit longer so I know what I need to tag. So I'm not going to make yeah. any structure of my scripts before I know That's all the point. Pain. Yeah. But once I know my pain... Boy, oh boy, there's a lot to fix. I can like I know already, like there's so much. Yeah. Here. But that's that's kind of a couple of my writing things. I think it's good. I think, you know, a lot of people who I speak to, they get paralyzed and they don't start doing something. And so then they don't actually know what their pain is, they don't know what the friction is. They're just sitting there thinking, well, I wonder what super tag and then what field should that be? And then how should this be structured? But sometimes you don't know any of that until you're actually just doing the work. And yeah. so sometimes you just have to get messy first and then see see how then you would solve a problem. Yeah, like and that. I think a very interesting exercise in Tana is to rotate a workflow into another view. So, for instance, a card yeah. view or a table view and, and think to yourself, like, what do I want to see here? And what structure do I need to be able to make that happen? So, for instance, if you go to card views, right? Well, I need some kind of field which lets me set, like, the different card categories. And do I need more, like, display fields? For instance, like, the diary setup I did for a, a long time ago. Like, are there any fields I want to show off to make pretty? Mm. Then I probably need, like, an image field to capture that or dates or whatever. Do I want to use fields to kind of have like my titles have some kind of the actual name of the node have some uniform structure. So like just rotating uh, like a workflow, I think um, has helped me a lot in time. Yeah. 
That's something yeah, that um, when a lot of people start with Obsidian, they they start and they're like, oh, I'm, I want to use this plugin or that plugin. And please leave me alone. There we go. Um, and they're, they're talking about all these different features and things. And I'm like, no, just, just use the basic thing, figure out how the basic thing works, the basic plugin, the, the basic tool works and work out where your friction points are before adding things and potentially making like issues that you didn't have in the first place. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think that's the same for Tana because when I, when I jumped in straight away, I was like, okay, I don't want to touch any of the queries. I don't, I don't want to touch any of the look-in stuff. I just want to write and see what that experience is and go mm. from there. Yeah. Yeah. And I would add like a good exercise in Tana is to take an app you're today, to, you today have to go to, like where your information is siloed and see if you can replicate that inside your Tana. So for, for MySpace, it was pipe drive. You, we use pipe drive mm. for sales at work and it's a great product for our needs, but it's siloed. I was like, can I just build it inside my knowledge space? And that's a very good exercise in Tana as well. Cause you, mostly you'll find you can. Uh, Recreate yeah. something that works elsewhere. Yeah. Because like the, the, the underlying structure of Tana, they said to me, I'm not an expert, uh, like, it's very like all these products use a very similar looking database structure underneath and giving you access to like making those objects, the object oriented kind of programming uh, stuff that Tana is uh, like lets you make most of these apps in a very easy way. Um, yeah. yeah. That's how I see it in my head, which is we were saying earlier as a, as a user, it's very hard to see the, the background structural differences but as someone in that field, they're like, oh, well, it's obvious. There's this, this, and this. And I, I can just see the buttons I can push or the words I can type. <laughs> yes. Uh, what are super tags? I would say templates that are that, that have some added features. But yeah, templates that you can move backwards and forwards. I, I don't know of anything else. Benjamin is screaming in the chat right now saying they're schema. They're not, they're not templates, they're schema. Oh, uh, he goes I, on I, to say templating only affects the instantiation of a file instead of being a persistent configuration. So that's a lot of big words, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you said it. I wasn't reading. I was looking for the comment. I was like, I just heard big words there. <laughs> templating only affects the instantiation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take your word on that. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yes, like I would say, yeah. well, so the Tana team say that a super tag, so you should think of super tags as what is this thing? Yeah. And then you should tag it. And so a super tag in Tana is really just a way to say this is a thing. So if I, I created this, this is a question. Um, and then uh, we could add questions from anywhere and then we could find that with a query. Um, and yeah. that's how I see it as a, the very basic thing. And then, then you can extend the tags in different ways. So you can have fields, you can have, um, uh, you can set up templates or, you know, default um, data that goes in, that kind of thing. It's a way to just yeah. group things together, I reckon. I'll, I'll leave that with you because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still in my head it's just a template, but... <laughs> We'll yeah. just go with that. We, 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 uh, yeah, but well, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna just bring that up again. That's that's what we're going with. Sorry, Ev, I've just like covered your face, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I I could I could relegate okay. me. I, I can relegate me down the bottom. There you go. You're you're now in charge. Okay. Oh, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, what do the dots around the nodes mean? Uh, I got I got this question quite a few times because there were oh. obviously. You've got the normal dots, which are references. I, they've been referenced somewhere else because nodes that don't have dots haven't been referenced. I know that one. But then you have rainbow dots and other different types of dots that I have no idea. I've seen in the Slack, there's like four or five different dot things. So rainbow dot. Yeah. It's yeah. Not... It was like just like color. something that has more than one tag? It has more than one tag. That's the rainbow dot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I saw if you it, I was like, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, so if you have a tag um, that has, yeah, like, like Braga's doing, it usually it shows up as, yeah, you can see it's changing color. But you have, use like a blue or something, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do. <laughs> you, oh, you have your rainbow. <laughs> so it's a rainbow tag. That just means it has more than one, one tag uh, on it. 
yeah. Right. Yeah, it's nothing special. Um, I, th- I think, I don't know, I feel like there's only maybe two. There's like the single dot, which is that is the node, and then there's these ones with the uh, with the the circle around it, which is a reference node. So it's referencing back to the original. So oh, right. my camera's moving because I use my. And then you have you, you, like some nodes have information under them, and they look slightly different. If you look at the this one here, I'm gonna oh yeah, show my points. So uh, sorry, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. <laughs> uh, I have zoomed in like two hundred percent. Look! Look at the uh, look at this task now. That's the question now. Oh yes. Now oh. it has information. Oh, yeah. Data. Yeah. So if you like, if you just expand it, it has information. Yes. In so it. if it has if it has nodes underneath, then it gets a little a filled, a filled out thing. Yeah. Right there you go. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. I, 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 it would take a while for my brain to really acknowledge what, what I'm seeing. <laughs> Cause it, yeah, but okay. I, I, now that I've seen that, I bet someone in obsidian is going to try and replicate it. Cause that's what happened with the super tags. I think it was like two days after super tags came out. Someone came out with a plugin that did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the same node now. It, yes. It's, what did you do? do you- it's, I mean- it's all squiggly. <laughs> Yeah, I made a squiggly information. I made like a like a um, what's it called again? It was called like uh, it's um, called related info related field. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's basically this is information about this node only that only lives here. It's not like made a part of the node, but I've made information that in this view is like about this node. Do you want to share sense? your screen so you show me how to do that? Because all I'm doing is zooming in and going, ooh. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I'm going to share your screen now. So, right, there I, you go. All my secret. Yeah, so basically, um, if I, let's see what other the, the shortcuts. I think it's just Control Alt. No, it's not. Where is it? Is it Shift Alt? Yeah, no, it's not. It's Control Shift. Yeah, Control Shift, and I've now like made it squiggly. Uh, squiggly info. Th- now, this is literally like half of my YouTube videos. It's like find random words that I can demonstrate with. <laughs> oh, like, this is easy for me if this is a table. It's a so table. So I'll show yeah. it as a table. Yeah. So if I can add contextual information, and that's what I just did, or I can add like information that will live inside the tab. Like, excuse me, the node. So contextual information just lives in this workspace. And I'll, I'll show a bit like where that actually. Um, so here, I'm going to go into another workspace for a second. Um, here, I have a couple of tables that all have the same nodes, just in different kind of configurations. And because I work with them differently, like these are contextual fields that only exist here, because here I'm working with a, a certain type of information. But if you go in here to one of these, like you can see it's, it's uh, text for this field here. It, it doesn't appear inside this node. However, you can see down here uh, that it's like in the reference section or before the reference section, that it has this contextual information. So it's just a different type of information. And it only um, exists in that search, right? Yes. Yeah. Or, yeah. In the search, search. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a space. So if I'm up here looking at, uh, at the, the queue for Danny, that he hasn't answered yet, what, what is with all that Dan, the ton of hate, I can do it up here as well and say, uh, oh, is, is that the one at the top you're referring to? Yeah, I'll zoom in. Well, I was going down the, 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 the query, so it's actually down the bottom of the query. Let's see. <laughs> but see here, this is not now a diamond because there's no uh, squiggly information down here. The squiggly information is up here because that's there? where I added it. It only lives there. Mm. But if I just added, like, inf- inf- excuse me. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, if I just added information to, excuse me, pardon me. If I just added information inside this, that isn't squiggly, right? This yep. will also live down here, and you can see that this is now filled in. But this information just only lives, lives in that node. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I will probably be coming back to this part of the stream just so I understand what all this stuff means. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes you have a thing, which is what these nodes are. 
that is useful in many contexts and you don't want to clutter them. So you make information in just one of those contexts. Right. It, makes it, sense. I think, yeah, it makes sense when you have different, uh, different live searches, have information yeah. viewed one way, information viewed another way, and you only want the contextual information viewed in a certain live search. That's kind of how I see it. I'm going to bring this question up because it yeah. pertains to your sharing screen at the moment. Uh, are the nodes well, in your sidebar normal nodes or query nodes? These are just, this is just like a representation of my workspace. So some of them will be searches, some of them won't be. I'm not quite sure. This is a search. You can see the little uh, magnifying glass. And that is also here. So this is also like a search. So like my sidebar is just my different workspaces, uh, uh, like in the sidebar. Mm -hmm. Pardon me, my child might have just, but no, I think we're good. <laughs> Uh, right, so let's head back to Benjamin's question. Is there a way for a super tag to inherit from another super tag? Yes. Yes, it is called extending a super tag. Um, so you can take, so let's say a thing is a thing, but then it has sub things. So <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Francesco. Hi, Francesco. Hey. Um, so like this works for me in like uh, content ideas. So I have a super tag that's a content idea and then I have types of tags. Um, so a YouTube video is, a, is an extension of a content idea. So I can have all of the fields that are in content idea and then I can have fields and data that are specific to YouTube videos, like a script, like thumbnails, all of that, that isn't a, let's say if I was writing an article, well, I have different, um, I have different fields and default content for things that I write in the article, um, which is something that annoyed me so much in Notion because you either had to have like a million databases for articles and this or that, or a million fields, but then you had to hide and show and it was just really annoying. So I I yeah. love the um, I love how it's structured here in Tana. Yes, my 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 coworkers are employees. That is an mm -hmm. extension of person. But then some of them are billable, so I can actually sell them in projects. So they are either devs or like designers, and up under them again, you'll have like UX designers and graphic designers, etc. Now you could a lot of this is doable with fields, but like the the main three categories there, the two extensions person to employee uh, to like billable employee is is like a super like valuable way to extend that because they mm. they have they need to go to different spaces That's, yeah. awesome uh, uh looks like francesca's come and going so good to see you in here francesca <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh right can uh could the problem with atomic notes be the tool being not being well suited for it in Tana and Rome, all notes are atomic. I think it depends I, what you mean by atomic. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. my notes are not atomic. Like they're, they're not self contained. Like in some senses, like a node is a paragraph in a longer piece of text. Like that's not an atomic oh. node. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think the, the term atomic has been used in lots of different ways. Uh, you can mute yourself if it's a bit loud. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I think because Atomic's been used in lots of different ways, it's it's hard to say yes or no to this question because Atomic Note could be Atomic for a topic, Atomic for an idea, Atomic for just a question, or Atomic for a node, or a block, paragraph, section, heading. Like, it, it can be as large or as small as you want it to be. I think, uh, oh, I can't remember her name. Um, she talks about Atomic Notes quite a lot with Scrintle and stuff. Ha. Ah begins with a B. I can't remember her name. She's on Twitter a lot. Um, she does the academic researchy stuff. Um, oh, uh, uh, Bianca. That's the one, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, I'll take Bianca Pereira. Off for the moment. Yeah, so she talks about Atomic quite a lot, and her definition, if, if it was, of Atomic is just pertaining to that information. It, oh, it's yeah. not length of note or length of paragraph. It's just needed in that, in that moment. Um, but, yeah, there's... I I think that there's just lots of overthinking in it for me. It's mm. it's like whatever whatever atomic needs to be for you, 
just have that as your thing. Like, I think there's too many rules around note taking as it is with permanent notes and all sorts of, you know, so all stuff like that. And I think it has to just work for you. Whatever works for you is the right thing. Yep. I agree. I think similar with the ontology stuff, there's too much terminology. Uh, yeah. I think I've tweeted that quite a few times. PKM is overcomplicated. I think a lot of the time, mm -hmm. which it, I don't think it needs to be, but no. potentially a hot take. <laughs> so question uh oh no we've already done that one that's the one i was looking at i know to I don't clone... Think they're clone they're just referenced that yeah so it's not like they're duplicate or anything that it's a reference they're re all referenced back yeah. to the original it, it is like you're just seeing the original uh, from a different yeah in a different setting so if you make make edits to it the, the original is changed yeah, references yeah. for ref like for reference. The references are like backlinks. <laughs> Just yes. as, for for me, when I saw references, I was like, yeah, but, but it's mm, okay. <laughs> so it it became very difficult doing that video, working out what words is the right word in yeah. the right context. Oh, yeah, yeah. so confusing. Why can't everyone just use the same words? Page block. <laughs> Tone yeah. node but, rem. But page and block don't make sense in Dart. Exactly. Well, it's funny because lots of people that I talk to still talk about nodes as pages. Mm, really? Yeah, yeah. So I was on a call the other day and someone's like, oh, this is the page. Oh, I mean the node. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah it's so it, hard, especially when you're talking across think, apps. Well, I think yeah. so. I think, though, when you're looking at, like, one node, you kind of look at it and you think, oh, this is, this is the page. I don't know. Yeah, but but like, yeah, but like everything you write in a page doesn't become its own page. No. But everything you write inside a node will be an its own node. So it, like that's, that's right. how, yes. how it breaks down for I me. I know. So it's it's like you you're saying it's a page, but then there's nodes in there, and so they can't all be of there yeah. Yeah, anyway. So the unit that's of true. page doesn't exist really. Yes. It, no, it you're doesn't. Just stopping at some like level of kind of zoom. It's as clear as mud now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> next question. Uh, in general, how do you guys balance where things live? Daily notes pages, particular notes, for example, Braga, when you make contacts, do you send them to contacts or do you have them in lists there? I think this uh, relates to the library section of a workspace. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, mainly everything lives in, the, in a daily note. Everything will be hidden in a drawer that I've made in the daily node to hide that stuff I don't need to see. Is that a node? Yeah. Yes. The is yes. A node. Everything is a node. <laughs> it's all a node. <laughs> no, it's in like you said drawer, and I'm like, is that a node or is that like <laughs> a field oh, of a know. node? Uh, or... Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna show you my today node. Don't don't read the Norwegian text. It's very. Uh, I mean, I can read it. I just won't understand it. <laughs> okay. So you to share? just have. Yeah, please. Like, I'll, I'll normally just have uh, like. This is a daily setup I'm using right now. I'm on paternity leave, so I don't really have much in my today. I've taken it out deliberately because I don't want to be disturbed. So in my drawer here is anything that isn't these things that are here by default. Today is a lot of fun, I have to say. I'm going to say productive as well. I'm going to give myself those things. Mm -hmm. Here's my diary. But anyways, yeah, I'll have my oh, to-dos, okay. my training. And this is the link I want to look at every day. It's just a new, new site. I want a direct link, so I put it in my today tag. And then everything else I just hide here. These are just two like videos I'm working on, and they'll just live here. And any person I met today would live here. Well, actually, a person like I, I probably have like um, meeting with Ev, right? That's what I would have in here. And then in here, where Ev would live as a person. So this is where that node will live, and I'll never touch it. I'll just reference it. It's now here in persons. Yep. It'll be there. Like I don't need to put it anywhere. It's in context. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Looks good. I'm the same. I'm the same. Most things live on my daily page. I'm not as uh, as tidy. <laughs> I don't have a drawer. They just they just I don't know. It's not on the page. Um, I hear a lot of people like saying that. Oh, I move things to the library and this and people are much more tidier than I am. I just really don't care. 
I just yeah. dump things in and they end up where they need to end up. And so where I then tend to work, um, like where I tend to tidy or keep things tidy is in all of the live searches, which is kind of where my hubs are. So, you know, I then uh, like with all my content ideas, for instance, they're all, you know, in the right place and they're all, you know, by uh, when I want to publish it or what type they are. And so that's where I kind of tend to put the structure in but I love that I can just dump things and keep it so messy and then it tidies up itself. I wish I had a house like that. Yes. That's, that's exactly why I moved from Notion to Obsidian because Notion, yeah. I felt like I had to be organized right from the get-go. Yeah. Whereas Obsidian, I just dump it in a daily note or in a folder somewhere and it will yeah. it will appear when I need it to uh, appear. Yes, yes. Obsidian, so yeah, Notion tells you to clean your room and put away your legs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I'm sitting left to just play. Yeah. That's that. it. The, the way I describe Obsidian, like in my head, is it's an organized mess. Like my room looks like a mess, but I know where everything is. It's organized in my head. <laughs> yeah. So it's when when I first put my vault uh, on Obsidian Publish, people asked, "Where's this? Where's?" I'm like, "You search. I know where it is in my head. It might not make sense to you, but I, I know where it is for me." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, I've ticked off some of the questions in the Tana thing because we've covered them. So we're, we're slowly right. working through. Uh, right. Does Obsidian still trump tools like Tana in having the base format in Markdown and using plugins to make it appear functional for different use cases? I think that's a difficult question to answer. Does, does Obsidian trump Tana base Markdown at the moment? Because Tana doesn't have things like headings, traditional bullet points and numbered lists, but Tana does it in a different way. So... Yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> you have a couple, like like uh, Jens Christian, one of the active users in the Tana space, who's made a lot of CSS plugins. He made a plugin so you could just use the H1 tag to get an H1 heading, etc. Like it's not perfect. But, like you could go with that route, but I, like I think there's a lot of strength to working in the kind of outliner structure and then just making a document function that reads that as H1, H2, etc. Uh, like like if you think about the yeah. structure of how like a document is actually structured it, it makes sense in code it makes sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I think there i think there is power to it um power to tana <laughs> um how and what format does tana export to html for now isn't it i think, I think so. so yeah yeah yep. but i think that's very very early days i think they plan mm -hmm. to do a lot of work on that yeah Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, even Obsidian. Obsidian's export, yes, there is now an export to PDF, but I still use Pandoc because Pandoc allows me to export all the references in the right bibliography, my information, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So it's, I mean, Notion's export is appalling. <laughs> Terrible. Um, Terrible. And it's it's surprising. Um, but I think Tana's export's better than Notion's. So there you go. We'll add a, add a point wow. to Tana. <laughs> yep. I, I don't think you could get much worse than Notion. I mean, you have what, a fourteen so. a fourteen character ID at the front of the name, and oh, it's disgusting. It's terrible. How do we group referenced nodes? Um, you filter. I don't. Well, you if you if they're all a thing, so if they're all the same super tag, you can group them in a live search, um, or. You could have a top node and put them all underneath. I would say it's just a live search, I would say. Yeah, you just search, like, yeah, even even if it's multiple nodes, you can still just set up a search to find two or three yeah. different types of nodes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to say, but I wanted you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to get this wrong. Uh, I think we've covered this quite a bit, so we can give this, might be fairly brief with this. Uh, yeah. And notice what you make it in my head. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah no, I, don't, I try not to get notes. caught up on the on the language. I know people people crucify you for it, Danny, but uh, I know I'm the devil. Whatever, I'm... whatever you want to call it, I think <laughs> call it. Right. Uh, I think that's all the questions from chat. Yeah. Right. So let's head back to here. As you can see, I've ticked some off. I know it's it's not in order. It kind of annoyed me, but we have answered some of these. How does the transclusion behavior work inside of Tana? So 
for those unfamiliar with transclusion, that's essentially where you're embedding something from somewhere else into the page, basically. Um, yeah. But Tana does that. That's it, it, literally it what Tana is. Yeah. yeah. First of all, yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not a special thing in Tana. It is what it is. Yes. So well, I would say it works well. <laughs> yes, I I, th I think um, for those for those that ask this question, their Obsidian users thinking about embedding it elsewhere. Same with Rome. Yeah. Uh, I think like Logseek, if you don't have access to Tana, which I recognize it struggles, I think Logseek is probably the closest you're going to get to the to the Tana experience. But Tana Transclusion, it's it literally what Tana is built for in in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. So if you use it a lot. Tana be helpful. Uh, this next one. When will we get a calendar view? I think the more often we mention it, the faster we'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I am curious, though. Um, I only got a couple people who ask me this question, but as someone that uses Morgan, Google Calendar on the back end, as a calendar, I experimented with using Obsidian and using calendar plugins in Obsidian but because it wasn't linked with my events and my schedules that were booked through Morgan, I never went to the calendar. So I guess my question would be, what right would now. you, what would you use the calendar in Tana for? Yeah, it's difficult. Okay. The only thing I would use it for is um, like, if I wanted to see uh, all of the content that I had um, scheduled over time, but I still, I still don't even use the calendar that much in Notion. So I don't have like the, and I'll tell you, one of the reasons is I don't actually like the monthly calendar view. I think that you can't see much on a card in the monthly calendar view. So I think that if you could have like a week view, um, that would be very nice. And I might kind of like, you know, like to line things up that way. Um, so yeah, that's kind of probably the only the only reason I would do it. But yeah. again, I, I keep all kind of meetings and that kind of stuff outside. It's like the only place I put meetings is on my daily page and that's so I can take notes on those meetings. Um, so, yeah. I will like venture into schedule. fields. I, yeah. I will venture into fields where I might say something very stupid, uh, but like if you, like, I think maybe a calendar view is uh, like might be plug-in territory because you have to be quite prescriptive to make it good. Like you can fetch events from your Google calendar and stuff. But like if you want to be able to like set up, say a weekly view and then have any kind of functionality where you can kind of block out an hour here, block out an hour there, you kind of need to like for that view to work, uh, you mm. kind of need to have like functionality like, uh, like start time, end time kind of baked in, right? You can't just leave that up to your structure of, so like, yeah. and that's being quite prescriptive because some people might not want their system that way, but for the people that want it that way, like a plugin might be a great solution. And then if that plugin is the only way people use it, then Tana can kind of adopt it as their standard. But that, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, I'd yeah, love okay. to have like a Google calendar plugin so I can get my yeah. information in. But that's kind but of that's literally every everyone using any notes app, whether it's Rome, Obsidian, Notion, everyone wants that. <laughs> the, yeah. The full yeah. calendar plugin inside of Obsidian is extremely close because it's got day, week, month list. It's got all the calendar views. It's got time blocking. It automatically puts the YAML information for start time, end time. It's got recur recurring and everything. So it is a fully functional calendar inside of Obsidian. But there is no way currently at the moment anyway to get your Google events in there as a page. So mm. I'm still limited by the well, if someone books an event with me through Morgan, it's on my Morgan, not in Obsidian. Once that's solved, Morgan integration, going to push that again for the Morgan developers listening. Um, once that's solved, then I, I would I would use it, but until then I won't. And the only time I used the calendar inside of Notion was to add a date to a task. <laughs> that's literally the only yeah. point. Mm. Yeah. And that well, you one... have in, in Tana. Exactly. Yeah. The one thing I used Rome for, I did use the Google um, extension or plugin, whatever it was, and I could just go... Google, all of my meetings for the day were in there, which I loved. So I really yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. 
I have Morgan as a as a hotkey. Um, so Alt C on my keyboard, I bring up my day, and then I can use the arrow keys to go left and right, which is mm. I love it because it doesn't matter where I am, what I'm doing. I just what? Oh yeah, that's what I was doing, and then get back to it. Most of the time, it's checking that I haven't missed lunch or dinner because I've forgotten because I'm doing something. But <laughs> uh, this. This is a question I got from, funny enough, a load of uh, past Notion users that are thinking about Tana. Can you make a dashboard like Notion inside of Tana? It's a project I'm doing inside of Obsidian at the moment, an in-progress project. Can you do it in Tana? Um, yeah, I've got, I mean, I've got a heap of dashboards. Yeah, you can make dashboards in Tana. Whether you can make them like a Notion is another, like, mm -hmm. what kind of dashboard do you want to make? I was going like, to say, I think the, the question... I think the question they're getting to, I, I don't know, this is me guessing, but okay. the columns, the, the banners, the icons, the oh, fancy aesthetic the stuff, that's my aesthetic. guess. Okay. No, no, you can't, you can't do the aesthetic, I don't think. You can add, I think you can still add images to the top of the page. You can do um, some pretty cool things. I'm yeah. trying to just like make that make something while we're talking. Mm. Well, yeah, okay. I I mean, yesterday I put a feature request in to um, embed GIFs like Command K Giphy. Um, I would really love that. <laughs> um, uh, didn't get many pluses on on it. I don't know why. Um, it's the same as my confetti idea, um, but I don't <laughs> think it has. It doesn't have as much aesthetic. No, um, I think. I uh, I don't know. I kind of like I kind of went away from the notion aesthetic for a bit because I'm busy doing work. Not that I not that you, you can't make it pretty. That was not. I didn't mean to say that. Um, <laughs> trying to be retract. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, like I do. I want to work. Okay, here's my thing. I do want to work in an app that I like looking at every day. So like like in Rome, I did all the CSS to make it look like I love this and I love working in it, but I don't necessarily have to have the pictures and the colors and, and all of that, like a lot of the, the notion people do, but I understand why they want to do it. It's, it's funny when I, when I first started like the YouTube stuff on notion, I never used banners because I didn't see the point and it pushed my writing further down the page. I had to scroll and it was annoying. Yeah. And all the comment section was, why don't you use a banner? Why don't you use an icon? Because like, I have to scroll. <laughs> it's added scroll time. And then after like a year, year and a bit, people stop, stopped using it for the, for that exact reason. I'm like, see, yeah. I told you. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't use that many banners. Yeah. So, um, so, so th this isn't, this is not going to be great, but if you share my screen for a second. Yep. Like, Ooh. like one thing you can do is like, I can save this layout as a screen like this is a huge table with a lot of pictures but like i can make like a screen with backgrounds and kind of different things and this could be a tab view like if i went up a couple levels uh, this is a tab view it's just i wanted to show like this is, mm. i don't know so, so you can get if you want it you can get some level of what they're talking about you can make like layouts for different stuff but it's not going to be great yet yeah. That, yeah. that's what i was thinking when when they said dashboard I, my my head immediately went to workspace because that's how i'm thinking yeah. or how i thought originally of doing it in obsidian now in obsidian you can combine some plugins and some css to make it look pretty cool but that's css <laughs> yeah yeah this is yeah nice right we're we're almost there uh we okay. we, we might leave this this last one <laughs> <laughs> okay uh Mobile do slash they when mo yeah mobile app basically I would imagine is like a future thing. <laughs> like it's definitely a thing. It's definitely on the radar. Um, but it I mean like anything. Yes, uh, I don't think you have to wait as long as we waited with Rome. But mm. uh, yeah, no, yeah, quick, no. Quick. <laughs> there will be an app. It's yeah, it's definitely there. I mean, to be honest, I already use it on my phone. Um, if I through the browser. Quickly, yep. Yeah. Um, but don't use it on your iPad. That is the <laughs> official advice. Don't, because you might lose info. Ooh, yeah. Mm. I must say, Obsidian's recent update to the phone and iPad slash tablet use was mm. like really nice. Um, I, I used Obsidian on my phone a lot anyway, but with the tabs update, you can, that, there's tabs. I've got a video coming out. What's the day today? <laughs> Uh, Friday here, but tomorrow. I have a video coming out tomorrow um, that talks about the mobile and, and iPad app oh. on Obsidian, and they've done it 
they've done it so that it doesn't feel like a hassle to go between tabs. And I think they've done it actually better than Chrome. <laughs> like, you know, when you're in a wow. Chrome browser and you have like tons uh, of tabs, you're like, what's going on? Terrible. Yeah, Obsidian, it's just down the bottom. And I think if, if Tana was to do something like on the app, because of the way it's an outliner, the way it works, I think using some of the Obsidian model of the swipe left, swipe right, the configure, putting that in there would be really, really handy. Um, yeah. Because the Notion yeah. app, the Notion app on the phone sucks. Sorry, it just does. <laughs> I don't really use it that much on the phone. I use well, it on my iPad, but not on my phone. When, when I'm outside walking the dog or walking around doing a, my morning walk to sort of chill out because I'm like 100% in the morning. Well, most days uh, I go on my phone to record podcasts or record information or notes, whatever notion, obviously cloud-based. So I lost connection. So that was annoying anyway, but having to go backwards and forwards with pages and databases and scroll it, it was, it just wasn't nice, but obsidians, it's really nice. It's really fluid. Um, I have to update it. So yes. Plus obviously you've got the new aesthetic as well, which is quite nice. Okay. Uh, Things you can do in Tana you can't do in other apps. Brag about having access. <laughs> <laughs> Tell people you don't have any invites. <laughs> no, yep. that's mean. That's mean. Um, I rate that. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. I, I don't like to. I've, when I, the first couple of weeks, as much as I was excited, I actually, that was like a tempered excitement because I thought, Oh, I don't want to be one of those people who's always talking about it and then no one has access, but then everybody else did. So now I just am. So yeah. you, you start off thinking I shouldn't be too like braggy about it. And then you're like, nah, yeah. you know what? I'm just going to do everything, everything time. Yeah. Like yeah. full send. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it can do. I'm trying to think. I mean, look, what it can do is it can, um, uh, you can have, a node with structured information all in one, which I don't think that there is another app out there like that. Or like... Ooh, or, careful, careful. My I comment know, section I'm may go. To, I don't know. Oh, no. Um, or like at least as the basic functionality, like like core functionality. I think it does... It brings together functions that I think other apps have as singular functions or plugins or that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it has a very good, like, emergent structure, like, experience that, like, you can just write and outline stuff and then it, like, structure kind of emerges as it's needed. Uh, but, like, you, like if, <laughs> with enough plugins, you can do anything in most apps. I reckon. Yeah. Agreed. Uh how to add search in the default content of hash a day for nodes tag with the day of the week like anything tag with uh, yeah just generally with the day tag <laughs> i think the day tag is a an auto tag given by tana not created am i right in saying that it, the, it, yes. when you yes when you get a new account it has the day tag already you yeah, can configure which, it however you want but it's already there but in like in a new workspace, you can you have to set it up, right? If you, you have, have to set yeah. it up, yeah. I did notice that when yeah. I was doing my uh, demo feature video. request. <laughs> no, it's like I'm like, where's the day tag? I'm like in my videos, I'm like, you don't actually have to add this day if you're in this. Oh, it's, it's yeah. yeah. Um, but you can, yeah, you can have day like weekday tags, like for instance, Monday. You can you could have that um, as an extension of the day tag, um, and so if you do have specific content that you have that you want to live on your Mondays, then you could do that. But uh, you'd have to then just add that tag. Let's say it was a yeah. Monday, you just add the tag. I, I know this is stuff that they're thinking about. Um, yeah, not maybe this specifically, but this kind of problem area. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think my days. Um, differ that much except for tasks so I do have it, all, all of my tasks I don't actually have due dates for any of them I have a due date and it's a field that says Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday so at the beginning of the week I just set up the tasks on the days I want to do them um, but I just have a search that searches I, I just I just configure it on the day I haven't really I just do a manual 
I'm a man who will. Sounds good. Right. Yeah. Moving on. Next one. Uh, can you create a layout that uses specific nodes and uses the today node? I think that's what Raga showed. No, he he means like a relative day node. So like your day of the, yeah. the day that you're bringing it up. Um, and I don't think you can do it yet. That's the first I thing I asked. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> first thing this I asked because I want, yeah. 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 Relative days are not uh, a thing yet in Tana. But, but they think. will be. Yeah. The, anyway. There's a lot of, there's a definite lot of feature requests for it. Yeah. Yeah, I know you can do it in Obsidian. Just, just, just gonna say that. Thanks so much. <laughs> putting it out there. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll leave that one for the end. And then, what writing project could you imagine doing in Tana as a larger experiment? So, when it comes to writing in general, most of my research at the moment is to obviously um, done in Obsidian. I've got a. a a collab vault where I'm bringing in information mainly around the extended cognition and the four E's of cognition, which I think is where a lot of the Rome, Tana, PKM users, if they are academics, they lean that way using the extended uh, brain or the extended uh, cognition hypothesis. So that would probably be the larger project I do inside of Tana, how it would work. I have no idea. <laughs> um, because like I said, like I said earlier in the stream, I've never done a large research project. Um, and the way it's working at the moment in the Obsidian Sync Vault is I've got people working on, for, for those unfamiliar, the four E's are extended, embedded, embodied, and inactive. Um, so I've got a couple of people that are very familiar with embedded cognition. I'm very familiar with all four, but I'm focusing on the extended areas. So even though it's collaborative, it's still separate. But yeah, that would probably be the the direction I personally take. Um, but again, how I do that, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there mm. anything else in chat? Or is there anything else you want to add? Not for me. No? Okay, yeah. right. Uh, anything else in chat? I do hope the week numbering. Right, I think that calls it out. And we're closing in on two hours, which is a really nice uh, time to finish on because I don't want to go too far um for for braga and uh ev you don't have to leave i'll end the stream it's fine so you don't have to worry about pushing any buttons uh for everyone else thank you for watching um i've linked braga and evie's channel in the description so go have a look at all their stuff because they yeah yeah down, down there um yeah braga's down the bottom so um but yeah so if you want to have uh, have a look at their their pro tana content <laughs> you can have a look there um any any closing words from either of you? This has been really nice. It has been. I, I love doing this stuff. Yeah, it's nice. Um, and when you can get access, hit us up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, I do. I love to, yeah, anyone who wants to reach out or anything like that, uh, feel free. I'm mostly active on Twitter. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right, so to close it out, Danny, why are you such a Tana hater? I'm going to end the stream on because it's not as good as Obsidian. So, <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. End it with a lie. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>